Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk to, uh, to you about a game called Cottage Garden from Uwe Rosenberg. Cottage Garden's been out for a while. Darn it, I should have looked before I started this video. It came out in 2017, and it's part of a trilogy of games that Uwe did in a Tetris-style puzzle, puzzly type of um, game experience. So there was this one, Indian Summer was the second one, and I think Spring Meadow was the third game. I had all three of them, played all three of them, and um, uh, we decided just to keep Cottage Garden. I sold uh, Indian Summer and, and uh, Spring Meadow. I just didn't think they were as fun. And for us, uh, that's why we play games, is to have fun. And this one was uh, uh, more fun than the other two. Uh, uh, or so we think, anyways, for what it's worth. But uh, we kept this uh, Cottage Garden game, and it's a Tetris-style puzzle game, like I said. And it's just a ton of fun. And it's cute. Uh, um, the artwork is excellent. It's by Stronghold Games. The tiles are nice and thick. You're, you know, you're, you have a little scoreboard that you uh, keep uh, track of the pots and cloisters on your flower beds. Uh, and at the end of the game, that's going to be your score. So uh, those are nice and thick. Uh, the board is small, and you know how I feel about that. I mean, this doesn't take up a lot of table space. Um, but it is just a fun, fun puzzle to play, and um, I wanted to tell you about it. Uh, you have a dice, and this is called the Gardener, and you, in a two-player game, you're going to start out on two, and it gives you uh, the scale here for three players and four players or whatever. But uh, you're going to start on the number two, and that's the Gardener. And when the Gardener is in that row, if it's your turn, you'll take a tile from this row and place it somewhere in one of your gardens. You have two garden boards in front of you. You can't hardly see me over here, but that's okay. It would look like this, and and I have a couple of gardens over here that look like this. And So you're going to take a puzzle piece from this row because the gardener's there, and uh, simply place it um, on your flower bed. Now you want to place it so you don't cover up these blue cloisters or these orange flower pots because that's how you move the blue cubes and the orange cubes up the scoreboard. So it's very, very important. And not only does that uh, give you a score when you're moving those cubes up, because there's numbers on the board, and, and I'll, I'll show you those, but uh, you also get like, when you cross this red line, you get a kitty, which is uh, these tokens right here, and that allows you to cover up a one space spot on your flower garden, which you're going to end up with a lot. <laughs> so you're going to need those. They're very valuable. And on your turn, you can take a tile from this board or take a flower pot, which also can cover up one space on your board. Now, you have, if you take a flower pot, you got to place it. If uh, uh, the kitties, you don't have to place, but you can only have two of them in reserve. If you have more than that, you have to place uh, the remainder. But um, yeah, so that's your choice. Is you're going to take a, a tile from this row where the gardener is, or a flower pot and place them in your garden. Then, at the end of your turn, you move the gardener to the next space, and it's the next player's turn. And he'll take, or he or she, will take a tile from that row, place it in their garden, same thing, and so forth, all the way around the board. Now, if you go to place, or excuse me, if the gardener moves to a row where there's only one tile, then you start to refill from this ring of tiles that you see around the board. So, in, for instance, if this were my turn, I moved here, I would take a tile and you place it closest to the gardener first and then fill up the board in that row only so that you have more to choose from and you would again choose that or a flower pot one of these tiles or a flower pot to place on your in your flower bed and that goes around the board like that once you go one revolution around the board you turn the die over to a three and then you go around again turn it over to four and so on until you get to six and that would be the last round. And as you score these boards, you know, they'll be full of these Tetris style pieces and flower pots that you took from the wheelbarrow and uh, kitties that you may have placed on the board. And once you score that board, then you would flip it over 
place it on the table and take the one other board that's there and put it in your in your scoring area and start working on that garden and you keep doing that as you score these flower beds so you're going to keep turning over these flower beds and there's two different sizes the dark side and the light side and the patterns are different with the flower pots and the cloisters so that presents the challenge a little bit of a challenge you know you can see the difference in these two but uh, as you're placing those tetra style pieces of course you don't want to cover those things up because in this instance and let's say for instance on this board if you covered up all these spaces without covering up the cloisters or the flower pots you would have one two three four flower pots and two cloisters so on your scoring uh, track you would move one of your orange cubes four spaces and one of your blue cubes two spaces and that's how you move up that scoring track now at the end of the game when you reach round six if you don't have at least three of these tiles on any flower beds in front of you you have to discard it and then on the last round as you move around the board you have to take your turn just like normal except before you start your turn you lose two points you can choose either a blue or orange cube and lose two points before you start your turn and that hurts I was very fortunate and lucky that I had just uh, completed a board and I didn't take another one which you know I, I took it but I, I wasn't gonna play anything on it so I lost it immediately but uh, my other board was almost full except for I think uh, one, uh, two one spaces. So I was able to finish that very, very quickly. I only took one turn in round six so I only lost two points and uh, Lori had a couple of boards she was working on that had a three or more uh, puzzle pieces on it so she had to, I think she took like four turns and she lost those points and probably if, uh, see that would be two, four, six, eight points those eight points she probably would have won but I ended up winning yay and uh, <laughs> that's always makes the game more fun but uh, yeah that's, that's the basics of this game it comes with a nice little uh, umbrella that you know once you're making your selection if you want to pick that piece up and and test it out on your flower bed uh, you have you put the umbrella there to kind of remind you where that piece came from so you can put it back if uh, if the row is has more than one empty space so and this and then you, of course you get this adorable wheelbarrow and we keep the flower pots in there that you draw those out of uh, to fill in the just the single spaces on your board but uh, isn't that cute and that moves around the board as you take pieces from the path the garden path you just keep moving the wheelbarrow so you can keep your your, your place and then like I say once you fill up one of these gardens and score it you take the pieces off of it and you put it and you put the pieces ran you know just random off your board at the end of the garden path and that's how it just keeps refilling but uh, I really really like this game I mean I played the other two Indian Summer and uh, Spring Meadow and they just didn't have um, oh, good games I'm not going you know Uwe Rosenberg is one of my favorite board game designers and he's one of the best in the business I've got many games by him I, I could go on all night about uh, the games that uh, that I have from Uwe that I'm in love with and this is one of them. This game is a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Uh, it was better than the other two. I just didn't think they had the fun factor that this one has. So Cottage Garden is one you ought to check out. Uh, Playtime it says is an hour. Do you think that's pretty good? Yeah, I think we were pretty close to an hour. And uh, eight and up because I think uh, you know someone that uh, a child that likes to play board games can pick this up pretty quickly. And then uh, it plays solo also. So there's a solo variant and uh, it plays up to four. So. Cottage Garden, uh, just a, a terrifically fun game. It's, I'm going to keep it in my collection because, it, again, it's um, what I call this a medium weight game. It's it's kind of a medium light uh, game. It's not, not really any kind of um, difficult rules or strategy to undergo. It's just putting that puzzle together on your uh, flower garden boards uh, in such a way that you can score the most points on your scoreboard and that's really it and you when you're taking these pieces you have to kind of look ahead you know if uh, if my opponent is taking one from this row well while the, your opponent's taking their turn you need to look in the next row and, and start figuring out which one do I want and beyond that also you know if if your opponent's in this row you're going to choose from this row your opponent's so this fourth row is going to be where I'm going to take 
a tile out of, I need to look ahead and see what those are even. So you need to look a couple of turns ahead uh, to figure out what you are going to choose because uh, um, you may have to use a kitty or take a flower pot to fill in a single space in order to uh, score that flower bed. So there is some strategy to the game as far as looking ahead. Uh, you need to do that and plan a little bit ahead on your turns. And, and uh, But other than that, man, it's a really, really fun time. Uh, Cottage Garden, I would highly recommend this game. It goes very quickly, plays a wonderfully at two players. Um, I've never played it with more than that. I, I should try to get uh, a couple of more games in with uh, four players, but uh, um, it's a wonderful, fun game um, by Uwe Rosenberg. And um, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below the video. I love every one of you. Have a great evening. Keep on board gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. Bye-bye. See you next time on Bones Collector.